Now then, we have just a few contact points with our bike, and there is one that you certainly do not want to overlook the pedals. And well, we have quite a few options here. We've got SPDSL, SPD, Speed Play, flat pedals, and that is all before we start delving into the different cleat options that attach into those pedals too. So let's get stuck into this and let me run through the different pedals and cleat options so you can choose which is right for you. Okay then, let's see what we're dealing with. So starting with the pedal that most of you will recognize and be familiar with, the good old flat pedal. It is a flat pedal, which you put your foot down on top of and apply pressure and force down through the pedal. A slight step up from this would be the toe clip, which is again, a flat pedal, but with a toe clip on the front, allowing you to secure your foot into it to a degree, stopping your foot from moving around so much. But the pedal that most of you are probably interested in is the clipless pedal just like this one, which is a slightly odd name for it because you actually do clip into it. But what it's referring to is it doesn't have a toe clip on it. And the only difference with these kinds of pedals is that you will need a specific cycling shoe like this one with a cleat on the bottom that will attach and lock into that pedal. But as you can see, I've got a fair few other options here with me today. So allow me to pull them apart and uncomplicate them for you. Okay, let's start with the SPD, and this has been around for well over 20 years now, and has changed very little in design in that time. And very popular with mountain bikers, cyclocross riders, gravel riders, and even commuters. Now, I have to apologize in advance, I've brought in my mountain bike shoe, but it's very muddy. Yeah, sorry. Now, it uses a very small metal two-bolt cleat, which you can see is recessed into the bottom of the shoe, which means that you can more or less walk around on this shoe as you ordinarily would without hobbling around on a cleat or damaging a cleat, which is also why they're very popular with commuters. Now, they work by clipping into the pedal. You hook the front of the cleat under the front part of the pedal, then push down and clip into the pedal. Then to unclip, you twist to the side. Now, personally, I love using these for mountain biking for a few reasons. One, they are very often dual-sided pedals, which means that you can clip into both sides, which is pretty handy for mountain biking, given that you naturally end up sort of clipping in and out more regularly. Two, they work very well in muddy conditions. The design of them means that they don't get clogged up quite so much. And three, they're very often made of metal, meaning they're more durable. You're not wearing them out and damaging like you would with some other cleats. And whilst you can obviously spend some pretty good money on these pedals, you can also pick up some pretty basic ones for around 30 quid. There's also some other designs and brands out there, very similar. So Crank Brothers have this egg beater system, which I used to use. But you can also get hybrids of these SPD pedals. You can get almost flat pedals with an SPD system built into them, which can be quite a good option for those that are nervous of clipping into pedals or perhaps for commuters that are continually jumping on and off their bike and want the option of just being able to quickly pedal without clipping in. Or perhaps you want to use your bike sometimes with cycling shoes, but also have the option of using them with non-cycling shoes. Okay, then moving on and to these pedals, which are probably more familiar with most of you out there. So in one hand, I have the Look Kio clipless pedals, and in the other hand, I have the Shimano SPD SL clipless pedals, which both look remarkably similar and to be fair, there's very little that really separates them. Now look, which I have in this hand, were actually the pioneers of these clipless pedal systems back in the 80s when they brought their ski binding experience and know-how to cycling. Now they use a cleat, which I can show you here, which is a large rigid piece of plastic which uses three bolts to attach to the bottom of a cycling shoe. Now this larger surface area of the cleat provides a better contact patch to the pedal, which in theory provides a better and more efficient transfer of power. Now the main issue with these systems is that the cleat, which is made of plastic, is exposed on the bottom of the shoe. So when you start walking around in these shoes, it's a little bit cumbersome and inevitably you are going to start wearing that cleat out pretty fast. 
Now then, moving on to the differences, and it's the main difference between these look pedals and this system and the Shimano SPD SL pedals and system is that the Shimano cleats tend to be a little bit broader, they've got a wider platform, and therefore, in theory, offering a better transfer of power although that's debatable. The main difference though, and choice for all of us, just comes down to personal preference and feel. On which note, both options and systems do have different cleat options to go with that with differing levels of flow, which means the amount of movement that those cleats offer. And that ranges from more or less zero flow to moderate flow to quite a lot of flow. And most people opt for the moderate float cleat option, which I've actually got on these cycling shoes here, which offers a little bit of side to side movement, I meaning you're not putting too much strain on those lower limb joints and muscles. I have also been using the zero float cleats for quite some time now on some of my cycling shoes, particularly when I'm racing, just because I don't really like that side to side movement, any potential loss of power. I know I'm a bit odd like that. What it does mean though, is if you are going for the zero float, you literally have to have your cleat set up perfectly so you aren't putting any undue strain on those lower limbs. And if you have had any niggles or injuries before, you probably want to avoid the zero float. Now, there are obviously a big range of options when it comes to these pedals. You can pick up the very basic options in both Look, Shimano and other brands for around 40 to 60 quid. But then the more popular options like the Look Kyo 2 Max that I have here and the Shimano Ultegra, you can pick up for around 65 to 100 pounds. And now for something totally different, the speed play pedal. And these are almost working in the total opposite and reverse of the previous options. As you'll notice, the pedal is very small, almost like a lollipop shape. And rather than the cleat clipping into the pedal, as with the other options, the pedal clips into the cleat. Now, the big benefit of these pedals is that they are hugely adjustable. The cleat position can be adjusted in three planes and all independent of one another. So they really are a bike fitter's dream, particularly for someone that may have existing or previous knee pain. And unlike the Look pedals and the Shimano SPD SL pedals, these are actually dual sided. So you can clip into either side of the pedals. They're also incredibly light, which is why they are so popular in the Pro Peloton. It is also worth mentioning though that Speedplay do recommend that you maintain these pedals and systems on a regular basis, even says on the cleat itself, use dry lube routinely on the spring. And I've heard that from a number of people that you do need to either apply a little bit of chain lube or some sort of lube to the cleat and the pedal itself, particularly if you've been riding in wet conditions. Now I've got to say, these do come on with a slightly higher price tag. They tend to start at around 120 pounds. And for that reason, it does tend to put a lot of people off. Although I have heard many people say that they'd always been put off by the price, but since getting them and using them, they'll never go back. And I've got to say, I've just been handed these Wahoo zero speed play at pedals. It's the first set I've had. I'm very excited to start using them. So I'll report back at a later day once I've had a little bit more use of them. I hope today's video has been helpful. I've run through a whole range of pedals there. If you've got any questions, please do drop them in the comments section down below. If you've enjoyed today's video, found it helpful, please do get a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to give us a subscribe down below.